Okay, we got Ray Bell over here. Grinder. Grind, grinder man. We're just jumping into this guy. So what we're doing, you know, we got our street tires, which are fine. Uh, then we got our drag radials. Currently, we're running a 2610, but as soon as these are wore out, we're gonna go up to a 2810.5. So, we need to do a little bit of cutting back here, and we've been figuring out what we wanna cut out. So, obviously, you've got where my bump stop used to be. Uh, it protrudes out a little bit. That has to go. Now, we're not exactly sure how much else is going to have to go when we go to the 2810.5 so we're trying to get kind of get ahead of the ball here and go ahead and clearance it so when i do step up a tire size we won't have to worry about this again so basically what we've decided to do since this all bulges out uh raised drawn well a couple lines when we were just deciding where to cut uh we're just going to cut right through here guys and down through here so this whole square right here that has this and has all the bulges and stuff on it uh, we're going to get rid of that and the best we can tell um, that should give us plenty of clearance when we go to the 28.10.5 so then up here I've already you can see where I beat it back for some clearance before but we're going to need a little more clearance in this area not right now but again when we go to the 28.10.5 so Ray's going to cut this little lip off here we don't want to get into where the metals seam together. He's just gonna cut this lip off. And then uh, we may wait on clearance in this until I actually get the 28 10.5s and we'll ha probably have to beat this in uh, about a half inch or so to clear. But that's what we got going on. We gotta do that on both sides. And then we'll be ready to put our, uh, our big fatty tires on here. And because I know you guys are gonna ask, these wheels are 15 by, they're 15 by 10s with a 5.5 backspace. And my rear end, the nine inch that we put in in the video a couple of videos back, um, it's a half inch narrow on each side. So it's basically the equivalent of running a stock rear end with a six inch backspace is what's going on here, which is the ideal backspace. But I chose to narrow the rear end because most cheap wheels are only available in 0.5 back spacing and uh, that just gives me more options on wheels without having to spend a ton. I need to, the oh, you mean the Milwaukee? Yeah. Ray wants the Milwaukee? I let Ray do all the cutting guys, he's uh, way better at it than I am. I make a freaking mess and fuck everything up. <laughs> Ray, Ray's a retired sheet metal worker. He kind of knows what he's doing with cut off wheels. Ooh, there it is. See, that makes that a little more flimsy where we can beat it back easier with a hammer now. Yeah. Back part. Yeah, that's going to be a pain. Perfect. Hey, look, now we can see the shocks and stuff. <laughs> I'll have plenty of damn room now. Should we, uh, should we round that off some? Yeah, I'll see what I can do with that. And then up there, we can just hit that with the flat wheel and clean it up and shoot it with some shoot it with a little black paint, keep it from rusting.
by the time you get done, it's going to look like it came that way. I got in your shock a little bit with this. That's okay. You gave me them shocks anyway. <laughs> That's the ones you bought for that 92 you had. Michael freaking Angelo over here making a statue. Cut that down right like that. There's no I yeah, thought I yeah. thought we decided there was a seam behind it or something. Like that. Okay. Get yeah, I'm not Michelangelo. I'm more like Leonardo da Vinci. You want to hit this time? Yeah, I'll hit it. Scoot over. So. Whoop, there it is. Y'all, oh. clearance, Clarence. <laughs> She's clearance, Clarence. All right. Take a picture of it. Gotta take a picture for posterity. We went ahead, got this side done. You can see what Ray cut out. I wanna just kinda show you guys why we had to cut it out. This is the piece he cut out. It was on there like that. If you can see, See how it curves out so it's it's sticking out so basically that's what we we're doing is just getting rid of that that stick out to give us clearance and then up front here up front here we had to beat it in with a hammer a little now we've got plenty of room to clear these these 26 10 fives uh when we go to the 28 or i mean these 26 tens when we go to the 28 10 fives we may have to do just a little more massaging with a, a sledgehammer on the inside up here toward the front. But everywhere else, there is just a ton of clearance all the way around now. I can't even get the camera in there to show you guys, but I'll pull this wheel off. I mean, you can see what we did. This is the uh, driver's side. I haven't painted it yet, but, you know, basically that's it right there. We just cut out everything that was sticking out. We only left... This, uh, this top ridge here, just because it was in like a body seam where everything came together, so we didn't want to cut into that. Uh, I was afraid that might kind of come out inside the car. This is the area up here where you've got to massage it with a sledgehammer to get a little more clearance. Uh, the only place I think we might have an issue when we go to the 2810.5s is just in this area right here. You might have to beat this area in just a little more, but all the rest of this, uh, we got a good, you know, two inches of clearance on this tire, so we ought to have close to that on the uh, on the bigger ones too. So we got the we got the uh, back tires clearance. Of course, I put the street tires back on it for now because um, we still got to break the rear end in. But moving along, <laughs> since that you know Ray got that knocked out pretty damn quick. Super Ray over there. <laughs> Uh, moving along to the other issues we're having guys. I cannot figure this out. So we've, we've got two issues Number one most of you know, I was having an issue where my my uh, fuel pressure Transducer wasn't reading well and uh, Brandon dollar from low dollar motorsports. He actually sent me a new one Because uh, I thought my old one was bad and guess what we're having issues with that one, too so at this point I'm about 99.999% sure the sending unit is not the problem. Uh, I've went through, it seems to be a ground issue, guys, because I've went through and what I did was I just direct grounded, like I took the ground pin 
out of this and I direct grounded it to my valve cover right here and it started reading it seemed like it was reading right but then as soon as I start it and it starts revving up it's showing the fuel pressure skyrocketing but when I've got an actual mechanical gauge it's not doing that so even just grounding it out like this doesn't work so then I got the idea I looked at the wire diagram for the Holly harness and all these sensors share a common ground with the uh, the fuel pressure sensor it's pin a18 on the uh, on the ECU so what I tried to do was I tried to unhook my TPS sensor and just ground this uh, through the ground on the TPS sensor to see if maybe something was broke back there uh, again it just reads zero like there's no ground uh, I pulled this this loom you remember I actually had this running underneath the intake originally well I've pulled all this out stripped all this loom back looking for breaks in the in the wire uh, I can't find anything guys I'm at a loss uh, but at this point I'm not getting any better ground signal at my TPS sensor or any or my coolant temp sensor None of that is reading any different than this ground for this guy So at this point, I'm starting to wonder if I might have something shorted out on uh, on terminal a8 Or what I say a16 hell I don't even remember now But whatever terminal that that sensor ground is on the Holly HP I'm wondering if I might not have something going on with the Holly HP itself um it's just weird because I didn't have any of these issues until after we swapped the intake. So that's why initially I thought maybe I'd broken a wire or something, but I've stripped the loom back all the way to the split and I didn't find anything. So I don't know guys, I, I may have to pull, pull the harness back even further than that, like literally disconnect everything and pull the whole harness out and just go through it a little bit at a time. Uh, I'm open to suggestions though. Uh, if you guys know some other way I could go about doing that, that'd be fantastic. Because one of the other issues that has also popped up is I can't get this thing to idle down. It's idling at like, well, the longer I leave it running, the higher it idles. When I first start it, it'll be about 1,800. And over the course of about 60 seconds, the idle will just keep getting higher and higher until uh, it gets up to around 3,000, a little over 3,000. And it will not idle down. So initially... I thought it had a vacuum leak, um, but now when I see that all these sensor grounds that go to that same pin on the ECU, uh, none of them are showing ground. Um, I don't know, guys. I think I got something going on. Uh, I've either got a broken wire past. Like, I'm not sure where all those grounds come together into one ground to go to the ECU, but I need to find that spot in this harness and and see if maybe something comes has come loose there because if not then i've got something burnout out in the holly hp but the the whole point of explaining this to you guys is there is no way i don't see any way i'm going to be able to take this into the track this weekend and i was really hoping to uh that was the whole plan is figure out the idle issue figure out you know clearance the for the uh drag radials back here and then I was going to try to drive it a little bit this week to get the rear end broken in because we never were able to do that. And uh, we were hoping to take it to English Mountain this weekend. But unless, let's see, it's, uh, it's Tuesday right now. It's late Tuesday night. Uh, unless something happens uh, between now and Saturday and I just miraculously figure out what the hell's wrong with this thing, um, yeah, it's not going to the drag strip. So probably what's going to happen is Saturday, um, you know, maybe we can push it out of the garage where I can let it run longer and uh, stuff like that without smoking out the garage. And maybe we'll get this figured out. Uh, I would like to smoke test. We've got our smoke machine. Uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and smoke test all this to make sure I don't have a vacuum leak somewhere. Uh, if that checks out, then I think our whole problem is in either the harness or that pin A18 or A16, whatever that ground pin is in the Holly ECU. So uh, stay tuned. We'll try to get that figured out. I know this was kind of a, a short video, but I just want to let you guys know what was going on, give you a little update, because I know you've been waiting on it. I had to work last weekend, um, and I'm 
like I'm having to work a lot of hours this week too so I'm not having a lot of time to do this but again just wanted to let you guys know what was going on kind of show you what was going on and uh, that's all I got for you okay change of plans we decided to go ahead and smoke test this thing so I got out my smoke machine I actually did a video review on this smoke machine freaking years ago uh, the problem is it needs to be hooked up to a battery and the battery's in the back and the leads ain't long enough all right so we got jumper cables running from the battery back there so basically we just hit the little smoke button here and it should start putting out smoke we got smoke coming out we're going to plug this into our brake booster line and just wait and see if we see smoke coming out anywhere around the intake gaskets or any of the lines or fittings that are on the intake see if we got a vacuum leak it's the damn throttle body it's leaking around the, the shaft it's coming out around the shaft pretty sure I mean we got this other one got this other one right here might have better luck with it but that's definitely leaking around the shaft like there ain't no doubt about it like it's spewing there's not a lot of play in it though I don't understand why it's leaking that bad I don't know if that would be le if that's leaking bad enough to cause it to idle at three grand either but I don't see I don't see smoke coming from anywhere else Ray do you like it's not coming from intake that's the only place I see smoke coming out Let me shut this off I think we've at least determined one leak there so Maybe I'll see what happened was this is the first one they sent me mm -hmm. and this guy right here was broke like you can see me spinning it yeah. but it pops out so what I might have to do is swap out that IAC into this one and then put this throttle body on and see if it seals any better it's coming out right there yeah and this side's sealed up right it can't come out that side I mean, it's obviously going to have a little bit of air leak there. I just don't, I don't know if that's enough air leak to cause yeah. what, what's going on. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, it, it's a little bit of an air leak, but I mean, I've got the stop screw to where this thing is almost all the way freaking closed. So I can't even adjust the idle much lower. I don't know. Of course, if that ground, if this ground is wrong or is messed up, going to the, the TPS sensor, then that's probably skewing the throttle position sensor readings too, and it might be causing something else to go haywire. I don't know. Well, we're going to keep tinkering on it, guys, but uh, <laughs> that's all I got for you tonight. We'll maybe do another video later this week after we tinker on a little bit more and try to get this figured out. So get out in the garage, get something done, and we'll see you next time here in Bad Luck Garage. Right, Ray? See y'all. See you next time. <laughs>